Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this morning we are on with Ayal Booker. Good morning, Ayal. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Ayal, you are not only a member of St. John's Wood Synagogue, you also are an alumni of JFS School and a good friend of ours yeah. and somebody who needs absolutely no introduction at all because you are a celebrity. You have almost a million followers on Instagram, almost as many as my YouTube channel, Not. Uh, how are you yeah. doing? Tell me, how's life going? I'm good, thank you. Um, all things considered, obviously, but um, you know, when you put everything into perspective, my family and my friends are healthy and safe. So although it is crazy times, which I'm sure we're all struggling with, you know, um, I'm grateful to have what I have and be in the environment that I'm in. So um, it could be worse. Fantastic. You know, Eyal, um, you obviously went to JFS. I'm sure you remember some of the great JS teachers who taught you over the years. Special, special shout out to any of your favorite JS teachers? Yeah, of course. It's going to have to be Mr. Joseph and Miss Krieger. Who else? The legends. The legends themselves. The legends. You know, oh, geez. They're really both amazing, amazing people and good friends of mine. Question I wanted to ask you, Eyal. You obviously became incredibly famous through your incredible performance in Love Island. Now I'm going to tell you, I've never ever watched Love Island. I just about know what it is, but tell us a little bit about that experience. What was it like? And did your fellow Love Islanders know about your Jewish background, your Israeli heritage? Give us a bit of a background. Um, do you know what? So I'll start with your, your last question. Um, it's interesting because I get asked that by a lot of people, especially within the Jewish community. Um, did people know you were Jewish and why didn't you talk about being Jewish? Um, and so, yes, yes, everyone kind of, the whole premise of Love Island, right, it's the dating show. So you go on there to find love. Um, the conversations that get picked up are conversations about the relationships you're having on the show with people and the friendships. We would spend, you know, we were being filmed 24 hours a day, so we spoke about absolutely everything. But the things that make it into the edit of the TV show are only based around the relationship and the friendship aspects. So we would sit for hours talking about our upbringing, talking about our views, our religious views. And, you know, I'm, I'm being Jewish has always been a part of my life. And so it, it was spoken about, but it wasn't projected to the nation just as nobody's religion or views were projected to the nation. Um, but definitely, you know, when it was Friday night, I'd raise a glass and, and say Shabbat Shalom to everyone, you know, and um, just because they're the little things that remind me of um, my culture, my community and my home. It's an amazing thing, you know, you talk about love in Judaism, it's such a massive topic. You know, the Hebrew word for love is Ahava. And in Judaism, we believe really that love is through giving. The more you give to somebody through a relationship, the more you yeah, love them. Yeah. And it's an interesting thing. I often used to show the kids in JFS, couples who've been married for one week and then pictures of couples who've been married for 50 or 60 years. And I'd say to them, who loves each other more? Mm -hmm. And more often than not, the kids would always say the ones who've been married for, together for so long because they've had a, a lifetime of giving. And um, I think that's an interesting idea to think about. Let well, me ask you I, this. Yeah, go on. I go think, on. You know, to love is not just in a relationship and yeah i'm a huge giver in everything that i do and therefore i i love i love the premise of love because by spreading love you you share so much with people and and you know you it, it's it's just one of these two-way streets and so i try and lead my life with giving love absolutely and you are very well loved by so many people um let, let me ask you let me ask you this question um we're talking about um beauty as well because beauty is a major part of what you do i know you're involved with modeling i myself mm -hmm. have um, stepped back from modeling even though i'm hugely in demand but uh the, the I, question i want to ask you about about modeling is as follows because beauty is very much a jewish concept as well and it, it's a, actually a priority in judaism in fact there are many biblical characters and, and talmudic characters who are very good looking famously you know the, the, the mothers in judaism sarah rachel these characters were beautiful women the Talmud describes them as well. And Joseph, right? One of the most beautiful men that ever lived. But it's an interesting thing that in, in Judaism, we're concerned with beauty and we're concerned with being attractive without being too attracting. Um, but really, at its essence, it's a reminder that each and every one of us are created in the image of God. And, uh, and, and beauty really is only supposed to reflect inner beauty. 
and uh, remind us that we're basically a vessel for our soul to progress in this world, to give to others, and to exude beauty to enhance other people's lives in many ways. What's your perspective on beauty? And also, do you think, as a society, we've lost our way a little bit with, with becoming so consumed with it? So my view on beauty is that beauty definitely is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. Um, and I wholeheartedly believe that because what one person perceives as beauty, another person doesn't. What I've also learned through my experiences, through meeting people um, and meeting some very beautiful people, is that beauty really is projected from within out, as well as you said, from that physical appearance. And you can see that me be in the company of the most beautiful person, but if they have a darker, not so nice soul within them, then that beauty fades very quickly. So I think they go hand in hand. And when you're a beautiful person within, you project that beauty on the outside. You have a natural glow. And beauty isn't just about the aesthetics of what someone's face or body looks like. I think it can definitely be projected through someone's personality and through their inner being. So I think the superficial level of beauty from the society that we live in is slightly problematic because social media glorifies it without really allowing you to see that person's personality. But I will say that more often than not, if people show that kind of the not so nice side of their personality, then their beauty gets diminished quite quickly. So mm. I still think people, people know the two and combine them together to decide their opinion on someone's overall beauty. And tell me something, in terms of being a model, uh, you have lots of teenagers who, who look up to you as a, as a role model perhaps. Who are your role, role models? Who are your mentors? Who've been really influential people in your life? Um, it's, it's honestly going to have to be my parents and the people around me. Um, I think from a young age, you know, my parents have both instilled morals and values in me that have allowed me to navigate through life and through my experiences and my opportunities. Um, and in terms of aspirational role models that I looked up to, let's say as I was a kid, like famous figures in the public eye, there weren't really too much. You know, I always knew that I wanted to go out into this world and, and try and give myself in order to inspire others and and kind of the people around me and to to chase their dreams and to lead the, their life to the fullest of their abilities and to do that with kindness and with love and so referring back to JFS you know when I was at school I wasn't the most academic kid I wasn't um I wasn't top in my class at anything my teachers if they see this could probably vouch for that and at those points in school people probably wondered oh what you know where is this guy going to go what is he going to do but i always knew that my way of my way of being was to connect with people and to allow them to see the true me so that i can then connect with them and see the true them and so when tv came as an opportunity i knew that that was that was my my chance in order to showcase the person that i am and also try and inspire people to be the people that they are it's an amazing thing, you know, you're an influencer on social media, you post a brand on, on, on Instagram and, and hundreds of thousands of people will literally go out by that brand. You have that power of influence and, and influence is a very powerful concept in Judaism in general. And um, I know you are very involved with amazing charity work as well. You do a lot of volunteering and, and you do stuff for various Jewish organizations and, and across society. Do you want to share with us anything that you've been involved with or anything exciting you've been doing? Oh, that, that's, that's a hard one. I do quite a lot of charity, to be honest, and I dip in and out of quite a few things. Um, I've done, well, you recently came to me with the Camp Simcha thing, and I've done some stuff with them before. During Pesach last year, um, we went to, no, not Pesach, Hanukkah, we went um, around to hospitals and went to deliver toys and stuff to Jewish children. Um, I do a lot of stuff with Rays of Sunshine. Um, I've gone to the Philippines with World Vision in order to see their emergency response reliefs to a typhoon that hit in the Philippines. I work with animal charities. I think 
for me, part of having the platform that I do is also to give back to community and society and to um, do my bit in order to help people. You know, it's not, I didn't get into this industry to be a selfish person and with my reach and with my platform and with the community that I'm building around what I'm doing, I, I encourage them to try and do their bit as well because if we all do a little, we can do a lot. It's amazing. You know, I'm inspired listening to you. It's so fantastic. And I, I can't wait. Please, God, when the synagogue's back open, have you over for a Friday night dinner and uh, uh, reconnect. It will be very, very special. I've got one more question I want to ask you. You know, there, there was recent discussions. I mean, COVID-19 is affecting everyone. Uh, yes. there, was, there was a discussion, I think it was on social media in the news. I think it was a big brother in, I think, in Germany or um, possibly Israel. I'm not even sure where it was. They, they, the contestants were all basically in lockdown. They're not allowed in or out. And they were discussing the ethics of should they tell them, should they not tell them about the pandemic? I don't know if you read about that. I don't know if you had any reflections on I that. Heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah. Well, what do you think that must have been like for them? And do you think being in that kind of environment, which you've been in yourself, what's that like? It must be very strange. Well, it's it's one of the most bizarre things. I remember when we when I was on Love Island, we would we would sit there some nights and literally say there could be World War Three happening as we're sat in this villa, and we have absolutely no idea, you know. Um, and it was it was a really at times it's difficult because you have no sense of control and no sense of knowing what is really going on. Um, I think in regards to COVID-19 it would be the fact that I think production have a duty of care in order to tell the people involved because they need to know that their family is safe and well sure. and that was always the one thing about going into Love Island it was like I know that if something happened that I needed to know about my mum somehow <laughs> would would make it happen whether she got on a plane and hunted down the villa and came and found me and told me that whatever I needed to know. So I think that in regards to COVID-19, the decision would have been made to tell them when, when the facts were in and they probably would have ended the show. Right. I don't know if you are. Amazing. Um, Eyal, I want to just say, it's been such an absolute pleasure. I look forward to seeing you in the synagogue soon. I look forward to maybe one day stand under the chuppah with you, with a nice Jewish girl, and marry you as well. And please God, we should only share happy times and good times. I wish you good health and success Thank in your you. career. And thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. All the best. Bye.